gosh, I got a gimbal. Yes. Come on, focus. Focus. Loud Mustang driving by. So, no more shaky videos. At least I hope not. Um, cold, man. Ah, in the 17 Rogue tonight. As you can see, I've got uh, maintenance for oil and tire and uh, all that good stuff. Time to rotate and time to change oil. But it's just barely over. I have a couple of people asking for a night drive on this car. I don't have time, I don't think. Let me make sure I even have my wallet. Yeah. I don't have time to do a proper freeway and all that good stuff drive. But we'll do a short drive. I just need to go get my daughter some gas so she can get to school tomorrow. Do her errands. But yeah, the 17 Rogue, we're sitting on 29,720 miles. Um, Twenty three point two miles per gallon on average. Of course, that's all city driving. That's all this thing usually ever sees. Um, it did go to. Let's see. This summer, it went from Chattanooga, Tennessee, down to Jackson, Mississippi, and back, which was, uh, I think, that was right about a thousand twelve hundred miles somewhere in there. And uh, it recently just went to, um, from Chattanooga to Cincinnati, Ohio, and back. And I'm not sure how many miles that is. I think that's eight or 900 or something like that. No, I think it's more about like 700 round trip. Um, so it's done some highway trips this summer. <clears throat> I saw the uh, miles per gallon creep up. Uh, to the high 20s uh, about I think the best number they saw on the trip was about 26 or 27 miles per gallon and that's about as good as she'll do if you want better than that uh, you're gonna have to go 60 miles an hour because <laughs> it just won't uh, it just won't get any higher than that. That's running about 75 to 80 miles an hour um, consistently. So it's not a 30 MPG SUV. I don't care what they say. But um, you know what? Let's see. The gas light's not on. I think I've got about 40, got 41 miles to empty. I could probably do a quick uh, little freeway run. And uh, I thought I had done one at night in the uh, Rogue, but maybe I haven't. Um, I need to adjust this gimbal a little bit more. It's not quite where I want it, so I apologize if the positioning's not quite quite right. I'm gonna take it off the gauges and just focus out the window for the moment. <clears throat> we'll turn on the map the nav so we can at least have something to look at you know that's an old really old navy unit um as far as the technology goes but you know what it works perfect i mean it, i mean it has never failed us it's always got the restaurants and the gas and where you can stop at an atm you know, yeah, sure, the graphics may look old school, but I tell you what, it's a darn good nav. It works plenty fine, especially for my daughter. She just needs something simple. I 
I need to do a 30,000 mile review on this, but I'll wait and do it during the daytime. There's a few things I like to point out in some good lighting. But I will just say this, other than oil changes, and gas, and tire rotation, that's it. It's been a great, great vehicle. All right, we're gonna go on the interstate. I'm not gonna be able to do from a dead stop because I have someone right on. I might if I just stop right here for just a second. All right, here we go to the floor. The old 2.54 cylinder gets about pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's not a powerhouse, of course. Um, but the one thing about this motor, uh, you know, you can take away from it is it's dead, dead reliable. This engine has been in use and been used by Nissan for years now. Oh, there's our low fuel light. <laughs> This engine has been in use for years now. And it's a timing chain. Uh, do I like a CVT? No, not really. Is this CVT been okay? Yes, it's been reliable. And I actually, I don't mind the CVT in this vehicle. I'm just, uh, concerned about longevity and reliability. Uh, just, you know, there's too many stories about uh, Nissan and their CVTs out there and how they have an early, a premature uh, life or failure rate or whatever, however you want to word that, um, don't last as long as they should. Um, I have mentioned before in previous videos, I have a friend that has a 15 Altima, 2015 Altima. And when it uh, hit about 100,000 miles, his CVT went out, gone. It's going to cost $5,000, I think, to fix. So he just uh, traded. No, what did he end up doing? I think he sold the car for like 3000 bucks or something like that, as is. And he ended up buying a, um, a Sonata Hybrid I had that I picked up from a government auction. I need to buy some more of those. Those are good selling cars. The only thing about the Sonata Hybrid, though, is, is it has a six-speed automatic. And hybrids don't act quite right with a geared transmission. That is the only application where I suggest a CVT. And I think every other hybrid in the world is a CVT, but the Sonata. Now, the new one may be a CVT, but I'm talking the first generation Sonata hybrid, like a 12 or a 13, is a six-speed automatic. And oh my gosh, between the changing of the gears and the switching from electric to gas on and off, the engine on and off, it is a jerky jerky ride uh it feels like you're riding a horse and horse and buggy <laughs> it really is but anyway i'm, I'm totally off subject we're talking about cvts though but yeah hopefully the cvt it you know it's got 30k on it it still feels good and strong uh you know doesn't feel any different than when the car was new so hopefully you know it'll last us a while um my daughter just drives it, so, you know, it leads an easy life. And as you can tell, there's a little bit of engine noise. The four-cylinder is a little noisy, but it's not bad. Um, you can't feel it's got good vibration control 
Nissan's done a good job at um, keeping vibration to a minimum. So you can hear it, but you can't feel it. And I think it's got more than enough power for your average consumer. And that's why Nissan absolutely sells the crap out of these things. Um, it's out selling the CRV, the RAV4. It's, you know, it's kicking everybody's butt in this mid-size SUV segment game. Um, you know, it's a roomy on the inside. It offers a lot of features for the money. Uh, the Nissan dealers are usually very flexible on the, on the window sticker. I've mentioned that before. Um, I have a friend that works for our local Nissan uh, dealer, and he's like, man, it's all about just hitting their sales numbers. He was like, you know, you can come in here and get, you know, 5000 off without even trying hard. Uh, so, you know, uh, you could get a well-equipped one of these for twenty twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000. I know the SL with sunroof and leather and all the nice stuff stickers in at about 35 or 36 um yeah my buddy's like i can get you one of those i can get you one of those for under 30 if you you know if you finance with us or whatever so you know they're negotiable on the price and they're a good suv and they're roomy the back seat's roomy cargo capacity's great this has just been a, a good little buggy uh, my wife, like I said, it's for my daughter, but my wife and daughter kind of share it. So it's worked out good. And the power tailgate's handy. Uh, the remote starts handy. Um, and, you know, who doesn't love a heated steering wheel in the uh, wintertime? So anyway, guys, I'll wrap that up. This was mainly about me just trying out this new gimbal and you guys witnessing a video that was not shaky for the first time in my seven years i guess i've been on youtube so y'all have a good night like subscribe share comment appreciate it see you